Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard. That thing behind me is my homemade bandsaw mill, which I designed and built right here in my backyard. If you're curious about that, I have a whole series of videos that takes you through the entire adventure of building that, and I'll leave you a link to that if you're interested. This over here is my smaller log pile, smaller logs than pile. <laughs> so back here I have three walnut logs. I have two longer ones and then one shorter one. I did a video about going out and picking these ones up a few months ago. I pulled these out of a backyard. The tree was laying down a hill and I had this kind of weird approach angle with the driveway and the garage there. But I got the logs up the hill and onto the trailer and back here. So I'll be cutting those as well as these guys here. These are a couple of cherry logs that my friend Brandon brought me from a removal job. So the cherry logs are kind of similar as far as strategy goes to the walnut logs. I have a pretty straight grain uh, butt log or the main trunk of the tree as well as a little more of a goofier upper section that has some crotches and just some weird limbs and stuff. So today I'll be sawing some boards out of the two butt logs and some slabs out of the two kind of upper sections and then I have the smaller section of walnut which will also cut into slabs. So this time we'll cut these butt logs into boards and then next time we'll cut the upper sections into slabs which will allow us to compare the two processes of cutting logs into boards versus cutting logs into slabs. So before I cut everything into boards, I'm gonna make cants out of the two butt logs. And I'm gonna start with the cherry log. So I'm gonna use my trailer to bring this thing over to the mill and get it loaded on the bed. And it should be pretty interesting because I have this big counterweight on my trailer today. <laughs> So since this log is pretty dirty and the bark's already fallen off, I'm gonna pull off as much as I can, especially within the blade path. You know, that way if there's any rocks or dirt in the bark, it's not gonna dull my blade uh, too much. <laughs> so this log has a bit of like a curve in it, like in this direction here, as well as a slight taper. It's a little bit wider on that end than on that end. It's like 20, 21 on that end and 19 on that end. So I've raised this side up about an inch or so this kind of balance things out so when I come through here, I should end up with a straight cut instead of having a big tapered cut. This log also has this old limb kind of scar thing on here. This is from when there used to be a limb here and the tree has grown around that limb that was removed at some point. So I want to orient it so I end up with a cut that is parallel to this. That way I expose some crotch figure in the boards. So because we're making boards this time and not slabs, I'll be rolling this thing around and squaring up all four sides. So the majority of this is going to be removed, but I still want to think about the figure that's going to be exposed on, I guess, the more show face. And I'm thinking the way that while I'm sawing this is going to be up in this orientation here, coming down through this knot area to expose that crotch figure, as opposed to kind of coming the other way, making slices this way. That's just my way of thinking and bringing slab production into the board production world. This log is also pretty stable for not being up against the stops. So I think I should be okay to make my first facing cut at this point without having to worry about it rolling over. The first cut's gonna be around 18 inches off the bed. So this log has a bit of a nub on it and now that it's rolled, that nub is contacting one of my bunks, causing this end of the log to be raised up into the air. So the log needs to be re-leveled before the next cut is made. Now what I could do is go down to the other end and raise it up into the air to match this side, or I can scoot the log down so that nub is sitting between the bunks, which I think I'll do. Now I set my first cut on this face, I'll measure up from the bed to see where the outside of the tree starts. That'll give me some reference as I'm setting my blade height. Ideally, if you're trying to make a nice clean cant, you want the blade to kind of hit where the outside of the tree starts. That'll give you the maximum yield on that face without any wane, which is just essentially a partial live edge. You also get down to that point in multiple passes. If you want to pull a board off first that has a live edge that can be later edged, you can do that first before getting all the way down to that final cut for this face before I roll the cant. I'll be cutting this cant pretty conservatively, so I'll probably leave some of that wane there and then trim it off later. Oh, oh, oh. Man, that is so clear. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful stuff.
so now at this point I have what I think I'm going to settle on as a cant. If you really wanted to, you can keep kind of sawing away until you get a totally square piece of wood or like a, basically a big beam and you don't have any wane, which is just basically partial live edge, which is what this board would have if it were to slice it out now. So for me, since I'm kind of going more for the most amount of wide boards as possible, I'm going to leave it at this point and this is going to be my actual sawing cant. So up through here I have a bunch of dry rot, it's all this yellow stuff right through here. That's from that limb that was coming out in this direction. So when you're sawing boards <laughs> and you're sawing more for yield, you want to think about how to remove defects or place them in places where they won't affect the grade of the lumber. And the grade is going to be the clearest boards possible. And in a case like rot like this, you want to think about where you want to put it. So if you were to saw down this way and make boards this way, Maybe that rot just continues down a little bit just down to here and then once you get past these first like three boards or something, the rot's gone and you have nice clear boards for the rest of the cant. Or if you cut it in the other direction this way, as you're coming through here, you're going to have boards that have an edge here that has some kind of like weird rot pocket kind of thing going on. But as you can see, I have narrow boards up here and wider boards down here. So it's just a matter of decision. Which way do you want to go? Do you want to have... Uh, narrow boards with less stuff, less defects in it, or you want to have wider boards that have a little bit of defect here in the middle, for instance, but you still have nice clear stuff towards the ends. That's the cool part about sawing logs. Two people might saw the same log two different ways, and I tend to saw things a little differently than most traditionalists would because I'm going for stuff that I want to use for my own work, and I understand that there's going to be some rock pockets here that might not be usable for a, a project, but just because like this section of the board is no good, it doesn't mean it's not still some good stuff here for like a door rail or door style. And then this stuff all down here, doesn't wide and clear. So that could be part of like a panel for a case or something. That's just the way my mind thinks because I'm actually using this stuff. And for me, I want nice wider boards. So if this were to be like the side of a chest of drawers, this would be two boards book matched. This one and the next one would give me the whole width of the side of a chest of drawers. So now it's just really a matter of turn the log back to the cutting face and start slicing boards out of it. But in the interest of efficiency, since I have two logs to turn into cants and slice into boards, I'm going to set this cant aside, bring up the next log and make a cant out of that one. And then I can saw both logs at the same time into boards uh, a little bit quicker. So I decided that instead of taking the cherry cant off the mill, and putting it back on, I would put the walnut log next to it and just kind of work up against it and we'll see how that goes. Uh, the walnut log is bigger than the cherry log so in theory I should be able to work up here above the cherry log or the cherry cant before having to worry about anything. So hopefully I can get this walnut log into a cant that is bigger or at least the same size as the cherry one. So same kind of strategy with this walnut log. I'm going to go for yield more than efficiency so I'll be cutting some pretty small sappy boards out of here and just kind of making the most of what we have here in log form. This first cut is going to remove a bit of a bend in the tree, the base of the tree as well as the area of the tree that's towards the starting point of the saw head are both kind of bent upwards so I have this thing oriented as sort of a smiley face right now that will remove the curvature of the log. And this whole thing is going to be pretty much the same exact process as the cherry log, turning it into a cant. It's going to make some cuts, and then when I'm ready to roll it, give it a roll, make some more cuts, and just keep rolling until I have cleaned up all four sides. So it's now day two. Yesterday I got out here starting at about three o'clock, so that gave me about two hours to get to this point. And that's just how my life goes. It's usually broken up like that. Today, the next day, I have a couple hours once again before I have to record wood talks. So I have some time here to get out here and do some more sawing on these logs. Another beautiful fall day here. Today, not quite as warm. It's maybe low 60s today. Yesterday I got to the upper 60s. Absolutely incredible for this time of year. Tomorrow should be high of like 42. So we're gonna get some actual fall weather tomorrow, but this is kind of the last really beautiful day of the year, I think. 
So I should be able to get one kind of narrow, sappy board off of here before coming down and making the actual final cut for the cant. So we'll get that pulled off first and then give this thing another roll. So now that the cant is squared up, I can decide on which face I want to cut my boards from. It is actually square, so there isn't one wider face to cut from to get wider boards, for instance. So it's just really going to be a visual look at it, kind of see what's going to give you the most amount of yield or the most amount of yield for what you're looking for. As I'm looking at this, I have a couple of things to consider. I do have this decent amount of wane down here, but it does terminate somewhere up here. So there is like this corner that we've been missing from those boards. This face is pretty good, but I do have the hinge cut at the other end. So the other end has a bit of an angle on it. So that would be kind of a waste area on those boards. If I were to flip this thing 90 degrees, the waste area down there would become kind of a, an area where the boards would get longer and longer as you get further down the log, as opposed to having this weird angle on the end. Now, as far as figure goes, I do have this one knot right here. So that would produce a little bit of crotch figure in the couple of boards to the middle if I come down this way. So that's a consideration. Now as far as this face goes, I have some more knots and things in here. So if I wanted to remove these knots and have clearer boards, I could cut through here. There'd be a few boards with some knots in it and then you should get some clear stuff towards the middle. Or I can saw down this way, just like on that side and have some crotch figure in the boards around this knot here and maybe some around here. So the decision becomes, do we want crotch figure or do we want more yield of the length? That is the question. I know what the traditional Sawyer would do, but uh, that's not me. <laughs> so in between these two cans, I'm gonna put all of my boards that I cut, they need to be edged. That way as I go through and make my cuts, I can be edging as I'm making boards. This gives me a way to clamp these in place without having to worry too much. I just have to kind of move the cants to release the boards, which shouldn't be too bad. Well, check this out. Look how nice that cherry is. Really deep, rich red. It's actually a lot more red than cherry typically is fresh milled around here. So this is probably gonna darken up real nice. <laughs> Wall, it's looking pretty good. So you can see here, this cut was made yesterday. You can see the color has kind of purple a little bit. That's kind of what you naturally see. And then the fresh stuff has a lot more green to it. And in, I don't know, a few minutes, maybe, 20 minutes or so, this green will fade and it'll become more of a purple color like we're used to. Got some really cool color and grain in these ones. Here's a look at that cherry. Really nice stuff. A little bit of rot down here, but the rest is all looking pretty nice. These are all going to get stacked directly into the basement for drying immediately. So I got to clear out all my stuff in there still. So I'm just going to stick over here for now. I'm also being pretty conservative on the edging. So 
taking them out probably a little bit earlier than most people would just to have a little more yield. Mostly straight edge, so you have the functionality of having a, a uh, straight edge in the rough material, but also you have a little bit more uh, just wood to work with in general. We need today. That's nice. So I have my first finished edged board. Now again, I stopped kind of early on this one. I still got some bark that could be edged off, but there's some usable sappy material there for something. This one's ready to get flipped, I think. I think I'll call this one good as well. Splish splash. Man, it's crazy how much greener this stuff is in the first few minutes after you cut it. It's so different. It's so green. This stuff is really nice. So I'm really glad we oriented this thing so we can cut through this crotch figure here. So we have a nice band of crotch right here. And that kind of plays through these boards. These are sequential from left to right, I guess. Or yeah, this is the first one I cut all the way across. And uh, yeah, we got some really nice, just kind of like little knots and figure things here and there, which are, you know, things that I like, that's for sure. Down towards the base here, we have a few feet of totally clear stuff, but even with the areas up here that do have knots in them, they're pretty small, they're solid, and I think they add a nice bit of figure or a little bit of interest because the grain kind of flows around them and you get a little more curvature in the grain. These two here are gonna have, I think, the most quarter-sawn grain so that's pretty straight and clear. And yeah, it looks good. Okay, let's take a look at some cherry. So this stuff doesn't look like it's as nice as I thought it was gonna be. It does have 
a decent amount of dry rot here towards the center of the tree. The first boards off are pretty nice though, but these ones are getting a little more on the dry rot side. You can really see all this is falling out because all this is rotting through here. But there's still some really nice clear stuff right over here, so still some really usable boards. I've used a lot of stuff like this over the years, just cutting around the rot. So over here you can see all the staining through here. This is still pretty good, but it is rot stained, so it does have a different look than the normal cherry, which is going to be over here. But this is a piece of quarter sawn stock right through here. So if you want to pull like a door style or rail from here and have quarter sawn stock for that, there is your quarter sawn uh, door parts there and there's some more nice clear stuff here. So you know, there's your quarter sawn board. If I were to quarter saw this log, this, this side would be like waste boards and I have these little boards right here for quarter sawn stock. And like this, I have a whole board where I can pull whatever I want from. Still really nice stuff. Looks like, uh, looks like cherry, you know, you got your reds and yellows and oranges and blues and reds and I already said reds, but all different kinds of colors in this stuff. It's nice. So the cans on the sawmill still have one more cut to go. So I'll go ahead and get that cut made to separate that last two pairs of boards and then we can take a quick look at those as well. So that's an overview of turning a log into a bunch of boards. And as you can see, you spend a lot of time in the beginning getting your cant ready. And then once you have your cant, it's just a matter of slice that thing up into the individual boards. Now I alluded to the idea of sawing for grade in the video. And the real goal with that style of sawing is to produce the highest level grade lumber from your cant as possible. So you're trying to produce boards that have uh, hopefully no uh, defects at all, any wane or knots or anything like that. And you're going to be probably flipping your cant around as you go, trying to saw off the best face. And the more experience you get sawing logs, the better you'll be at sawing for grade or being able to see which way I kind of orient this thing to get the highest grade lumber as possible. Therefore, the most commercially valuable lumber as possible off of that log. And you're kind of trading off wide boards don't really matter as much as long as you can get some clear stuff that's still commercially valuable. So that's a, a different way of doing things as well. And if you're trying to do a little more production style, you're probably not going to be doing very much edging on the actual mill. You'll probably have a dedicated edger. So if you have a twin blade edger, you'll just be cutting slabs essentially and then sending it through the edger to get both sides edged all at once. Or if you have a single sided edger, you might just saw your log up into like a three sided cant, leave one side with the raw edge, and then that will be trimmed off on the edger after it's off the mill. So just sort of scratching the surface here with the edged lumber uh, production and that's going to do it for this first part of the series. Next time we're going to take a look at sawing slabs and actually there'll be a third video as well where we'll kind of go into the drying process comparing how the drying process goes for boards versus slabs and a lot of the I guess the less glamorous things that go along with sawing all this stuff like what do you do with all this waste and how much waste do you really produce. So if you're interested in those I'll leave you a playlist link so you can get access to all three videos in one place without having to look around for all that stuff. So I think that's about it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything on the sawmill or back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.